Isaiah, 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 the 43rd chapter. Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. All right, and we're in this series, starting this series today, entitled, as I stated, Reset. Reset. It's going to make a lot of sense as we go through this. Make a lot of sense. Now, uh, don't forget, well, not don't forget, tomorrow we had the Collin County uh, Martin Luther King uh, celebration, but it has been postponed to President's Day. I think it's Monday the 19th in February. It's a day off as well because it's in Allen. Allen has shut everything down tomorrow. That's what happens in places that's not used to cold weather. Three days before the cold comes or the ice comes, they shut it down. <laughs> so they shut everything down uh, so there will not be a, uh, a celebration tomorrow. It's an annual event that's every year uh, that we are a part of. All right. Uh, Isaiah 43rd chapter, verse 18 through 20. This is the uh, uh, New American Standard Bible. And let's read this together. Y'all ready? It says, do not call former things or consider things of the past. Behold, I am going to do something new. Now it spring up. I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. The animals of the field will glorify me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I've given waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself. Amen, amen, amen. So, so we talk about uh, get ready to sit you down. We talk about reset, reset. And in the series reset, there's a little underlining statement that's, that says resetting the total you. Resetting the total you. The total you. Resetting the total you. And this first sermon in the series is, is going to be about a four-part series. Uh, this first sermon in the series uh, is really talking about and setting up what is this resetting? What's so important about resetting? Uh, and I, I want to encourage you and I want to submit that uh, uh, the Bible is all about resetting. And I, I, it's going to make a lot of sense. We have to, in our Christian walk, always think of the, the concept of resetting ourselves resetting ourselves in God through Jesus Christ. So just remember what I said. We always have to think about resetting ourselves in God through Jesus Christ. And it's going to make more sense as we, as we go through this. The total you. Resetting the total you. And I want to consider it a divine reset. A divine reset. We're not just talking about New Year's resolutions. I don't even do New Year's resolutions. I do an everyday resolution that I'm going to get better every day. Whatever I was jacked up with the day before, look, I got to fix that the next day. Amen. Whether it's a new year or it's the same year, in the name of Jesus, you got to challenge yourself and continue a reset. But during the beginning of the year, I always utilize a sermon that deals with uh, resetting, deals with us as Christians kind of evaluating ourselves and our spiritual walk and spiritual journey for the next year because then... You have January, you started, and then you can see the progress. That's why last Sunday uh, I mentioned to you to kind of chart a progress, chart a progress, so you can really see where you are. And I think we need to do that more so uh, now than ever. It's always have some type of system where we're charting our spiritual growth. We're really looking at our spirit. We do it with everything else. Amen. But why not do it with the most important thing in your life? Amen. Because the spirit realm is a control, uh, cause all realm. All right, so this is what I want you to do. It says reset, 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 reset. I want you, when I count to three, one, two, three, I want you to find somebody that's next to you that you didn't come with. You don't know them, really. You didn't come with them, all right? And I just want you, when I say three, I'm going to say one, two, three. All I want you to say is say, it's time to reset. You got me? It's time to reset. It's time to reset. You, you understand? Yeah? Y'all looking at someone now? Go ahead and look at them. Not your husband, not your wife. Not your homie. Just find somebody. Look at them and catch, make sure they catch your attention. 
You catch their attention. I'm looking at you now. Don't be looking away from me. Don't look down. Look in my eyes. Are you, are you ready? All right, here we go. One, two, three. All right, y'all said that kind of chill, kind of chill. All right. All right, now I need y'all. Look, look, I saw De Deacon Jenkins point. I need y'all point at one another. All right, it's time to reset. Let them know that you're talking to them. I don't care if they're across the aisle or what. It's time to reset. I'm going to show you something in this reset. Those folk that didn't come today and are not watching online, they're going to miss out. I'm going to tell them to look at the video. All right, here we go. I want you to point at them and say it's time to, not when I say three now, when I say three, when I know you're excited, when I say three, love that excited. I want you to say it's time to reset. You got me? You got me? One, two, three. Amen. Fist pump them. Fist pump them. Take your seat. Time to reset. 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 You know, you know, we hear that term a lot when it deals with, uh, I, I got an iPhone. I try, what I do with my phone, I try to wait till, till the thing just, just about explodes before I get a new one. Because it's a gimmick. Then I try to see if I can keep it long enough so when people say, what, what's, which one you got? I got the iPhone 3. <laughs> Look, this is a true story. Tasha had, Tasha had an iPhone 8 all right, when iPhone 14 was out. They, you had that too, Dale? Y'all ought to be ashamed of y'all self. Now, I don't go that far. But I guess I would. She had an iPhone 8. She held that thing so long, they sent her a letter and said, look, we advise you to get a new phone because all the towers that connect to iPhone 8, whatever the technical terms, will go away and your phone will not be utilized anymore. But, but, but uh, that term, reset, rebooting, is, is, is prevalent with uh, computers and phones and all that. Interesting, in interesting. I did some research and I was kind of checking this out because it talks about resetting, restarting. Um, and, and, and we know that it tends to fix the device's hardware uh, or the software. Uh, and what it does is whatever device is rebooted, reset, it brings it back to, uh, to a fresh state. You know what I'm saying? Like if you call them, the first thing they say, when I call DirecTV or do something like that, did you reset it? I know you're going to ask me this question, woman. I reset it 20 times before you even ask me. I already reset it, so don't ask me that question. I ain't going through all your little steps. Let me talk to a representative. I can't understand you anyway. Check this out. Most, most in my research, watch this. This is, this is interesting. Tiki, this is interesting. Most electronics are, are you computer nerds? And, and y'all know what I'm talking about. Are, are state-based machines. State based. I'm like, huh? Watch this. As in, they start at one state and go to the next in steps. So when you reset something, you restart it, it starts from the beginning, state based, and steps, steps, steps. That's why they tell you to reset it because in the steps there may be a clog in there or stuck in there or something, and it resets. Restarting, resetting an electronic device gives it a fresh state. It uh, uh, re-initializes, watch this, the device. Computers use, watch this, codes, you already know this, to run programs. And that means the outcome is programmed to some extent and determined by a set of starting values which the term algorithm comes. You get your, your algorithm, the rhythm of it. Watch this. Computers, this is in the research, and it makes so much sense. I was like, what? Computers and humans are deterministic. Watch this. Meaning that their outputs are predetermined by some set of existing values and thus predictable to some extent. When I looked at that, I said, whoa, that is so true. Watch this. Because as philosophically, as a, a human, notice what I said here, their outputs are predetermined by some set of existing values. As a human, whatever I value is shown in how I live. Listen to me. Whatever I value or don't value is shown 
and how if I value God, if I truly value God, it's shown in how I live. <sighs> Deterministic. So, so we are like we are like the iPhone or like the computer to get the reset. So that means that in 2023, there were a lot of things that, that I grew spiritually in, a lot of things that uh, happened in my life, a lot of things that God fixed and helped me be more patient, have more faith. Amen, amen, amen. Any, anybody, anybody was praying about some things that you know God changed your life? Anybody? Am I, am I alone? Did y'all, are y'all still the same like you were before? Oh, that's the problem. That's the problem. But, but, but in the midst of that, there are some things that I desired to do differently, but based on a lot of clutter, a lot of stuff that was stuck in me, a lot of stuff that's all around me, I really didn't focus on it because I kind of lost focus on it. So that's where the whole ideology or the term reset, divine reset comes into place because there's some things that we have to watch this. Remember, step by step, we got to go back to the beginning and that's why it's so important to keep it simple. Keep everything you do in your life simple. Don't make it difficult. Go back to the beginning and make a reset. So this series is going to show us what we need to do, how we need to do this reset. And give us a deeper understanding why it's so important, Sister Malone, to make sure that we are reset spiritually. And some other things. I'm, I'm, I want to get ahead of myself. So, so. This whole reset, the, 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 the major concept here is pivoting our lives, structures, and systems to do what God had originally called us to do, be the light of the world. So many of us sitting in here today, many of us that may be streaming or watch this as a recording, watch this. Uh, we can do a spiritual evalua evaluation or a walk with Christ evaluation and look at some things in our lives that we said we were going to do a little better and we didn't do it. Reevaluate it. Pivot, reset, figure out where, where did I slip up? Many of us already know where we slipped up. We already understand where we slipped up. Now we got to hit the reset button and get, get it back to the original state. Amen, amen. So we can continue to prosper. Because our prosperity, our blessings, our favor, our sanctity has a lot to do with us resetting. Spiritually, y'all got me? So, so as we look at reset, there's a, uh, I'm, I'm going to throw this slide up here in a second. There's a biblical reset definition. It says emphasizes, biblical reset emphasizes the opportunity for transformation, renewal, and alignment with God's will and purpose. Transformation, renewal, and alignment with God's will and purpose. It often involves a turning point or a change of direction in one's life. Amen. So when I looked at that, I said, okay, that makes a lot of sense. But as we, deal, uh, as we deal with us being Christians, and I did research, and I was looking at this whole reset stuff, and, 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 and the, biggest, the biggest information, the most information that you gather is this whole initial transformation from, from being a non-believer to a believer. That's a major reset. So when I sat there, I was kind of like going through the word and said, okay, Holy Spirit, there are some par paradigms because it's not just about the reset of a non-believer to a believer, but there are paradigms. There's some paradigms in this whole reset process, and this is where we are. Check it out. There's a conversion reset. That means you're a non-believer. You got converted. Conversion reset. Watch this. This, this, this. You're in one of these areas right here. All of us are in one of these areas. And then there's a growth reset, meaning that catch this. That I am a Christian, and my growth reset says, okay. I may, the, at the beginning of the year, this is what we do in the church. This is what, we, what I do when I present to leadership, and you, I'll present it up here as well. We do a vision board, then I do a dashboard for leaders. So the dashboard says, this is my personal dashboard. These are the things that I'm going to do in 2024, and they're, they're, they're uh, numbers that are connected. If I say, look, 2024, I'm going to win 20 souls to Christ. I'm going to make sure I evangelize 300 people or pass out 500 cards, all right? But I fell short because there's some stuff in my life that, you know, nothing bad, nothing bad, 
Man, nothing bad. Uh, and, and this is the growth set. I want you to understand this. Nothing bad. You didn't do anything bad. It's just you, you got laid off from your job, so that came in through a curve. After you got laid off from your job, you had to concentrate on some other things that took a lot of your attention, and you got a new job, and you concentrated on that, or you had to move and all of this. So it kind of got uh, a little cloudy in this whole dashboard stuff. So that's why we call it a growth reset, because you're, you're growing, you're growing, and you want to continue to grow. So now you got to do a reset. Look at all the things that you've said that you would do in 20. That's why it's so important to, to, to make sure you have some type of lift. Look at all the things you said you're going to do in 2023 and see the things that you got accomplished. That's not just the, the spiritual part. That's also, and I won't get ahead of myself, anything that, that's physical, anything that's mental, anything. And, and that's a growth reset. And then there's the, the refresh reset. The refresh reset said, I'm on track. I got all that stuff done. I see it and God just blew my mind. God did some extra stuff for me this year. Now I'm going to reset this thing. I'm going to refresh myself because I'm going harder. Get, let me give you one example. One of the, uh, uh, the, the reset pieces for us, refresh reset for the church, for the church, is I started, I started the, and you hear me talk about it, the G for J, uh, grinding for Jesus team, grinding for Jesus. And all the people that are on that team pass out 20, 20 cards weekly. Amen. So we got, we got close to, and I said this, we got close to 5,000 cards passed out just from that little team. Amen. Half of them got fired. They started with us at the beginning of the year. So, so 5,000. So we're going to start again. I'm going to hit the refresh button. Now I got I to gotta grab 15 more. Refresh, remember? Refresh. We did it. We started out with that number. Had to fire some folk. I had to kick them off the team because they weren't doing their cards. They weren't doing their cards. Kick them off the team. And they understood, Pastor. I'm good. <laughs> so now, I don't want to scare y'all to join the team. Join the team. Join the team. I don't want to scare you. But you just got to get 20 cards. So now, we, we hit that refresh reset. So now, in refresh reset, guess what I'm doing? I'm trying to figure out now because, watch this, Ricky. We had 15 on the team. There's something that I didn't do that I should have did. Uh, do did, did to encourage them to give out the cards. Maybe I don't start with 20 with them. Maybe those that just come on, we're going to give them 10 and advance them to 15. Do you understand? So now I got to refresh. So it's nothing that happened that was negligent, but now it's a refresh. So you fall in one of these categories. Now that's up to you to determine what category you fall in in the name of Jesus. Does that make sense? So as we, as we dive into this, as we dive into to this series, uh, it's going to be evident where you fall. It's going to be evident what you need to do. And it's going to be extremely important that you glean everything you need to glean from resetting because this is a prerequisite for every believer. The Bible talks about resetting all through the Bible. That's why I use this text in the Old Testament, uh, 43rd chapter of Isaiah, verses uh, 18 through 21. I've preached this sermon before. God is doing a new thing, but now it has a different, a different perspective following. It has a more intense and deeper perspective as it relates to God doing a, a new thing. Because in the text, Isaiah is talking to uh, God's people. You got two groups. Babylon had some that were in captivity. And then there were some that were still in the land, but they were still captive. So what Isaiah is doing in this 43rd, uh, 43rd chapter is encouraging them that God still has you. Don't be discouraged. God still has you. You got to understand that God is going to reset some stuff. So he wants you to know to reset your expectations, reset a lot of things in your life, amen, to know that I got you. So, so here in the text, Isaiah is encouraging them and reminding them what God can do. Reminding them that God will never leave you nor forsake you. So you don't have to, watch it. you don't have to focus on whether or not God's going to do what he does. God just wants you, Isaiah, to say, 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 just focus on you resetting. You getting in the proper position. You understanding the things that you need to reset. The things that uh, 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 was not, uh, were not maybe not pleasing to God. The things that you need to do to be a better you in God through Jesus Christ. The things you need to do, amen, amen, to make sure you connect and attach yourself to the promises of God. 
Because God's going to do exactly what he said to do. So, so we, must, we must focus on us and reset it. What is it that I need to reset? What is it that I need to do different in 2024? What is it? So check this out. So let me, let me give you these two things. Here, I'm going to give you these two things. I told you this year I'm getting out the way. I ain't going to be up here all day. Don't say it that loud. <laughs> okay, when I say that, I want everybody to say, take your time, Reverend. <laughs> take, your, take your time, doctor. All right. Watch this. Watch this. Watch, make me feel good now. Don't make me feel that you're agreeing with me. All right. I'm not going to be up here all day with y'all. Take your time, Pastor. Take your time. Make me feel good. Thank you, Dr. Willink. Now, check this out real quick. I want y'all to get this. Notice verse 18, it says, do not call to mind the former things or consider the things of the past. So we're talking about resetting. So this, this is kind of the foundational uh, sermon for this whole concept of resetting. So there's some things that we have to get to and you have to understand before we get to the, the meat, the crux of the matter. So check this out. It says, do not call to mind the former things or consider the things of the past. Because these are the things that, w this, this, this is really something that will affect your reset. And that's what he said, watch this. Do not call mind the former things or consider things of the past. Tell the children of Israel, don't, you're thinking, don't, don't, ah, don't bring that past into what God is doing now. Don't bring the past into the present because it will affect the future. It won't not only just pollute the, 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 the present, but it's going to have a drastic effect on the future because whatever the present does, amen, will pollute the future. So that's why you can't bring the past. Watch this. So what are you saying? This is what he's saying. He says, don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck in the past. Don't get stuck. Don't, don't, don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. Give me that, give me that chart. Give me the, give me the, I want to show y'all this. First point, y'all got to follow me now. I just said the first point. Don't get stuck. Y'all see that? That's an old car. Stuck. That's, that's what, that's the image that you see spiritually when you are stuck in the past. And you're not just stuck on the side of the road. You're stuck deep in the sand. Matter of fact, because you're so deep in the past, watch this. It's going to take the act, uh, act of God to get you out the past. Because your spiritual wheels are gone. You're rusted out. Your engine, you've been in that past, stuck in that past so long. Dwelling on stuff and what folks said in the past. And, amen. And the past also does not necessarily mean way back. It could be yesterday. It could be a few weeks ago. Amen. Because you didn't let it, you didn't let it affect you five months ago, but now it's done creep its ugly head back up, and now it affects you. Whatever it is, whatever the past is, you can't drive life's road without sometimes hitting bumps like uh, the regrets and disappointment. All of us will have regrets. All of us will have disappointments and tragedies. And when you do, it's easy. It's easy to get stuck. It's easy to get stuck. It's easy to focus on those things. It's easy for those things to, to hinder your, your forward progress. But how many of you know that God wants to move you forward? No, no, hear me, hear me. How many of you know in the building today that God wants to move you forward? That God has a plan for you. How many of you know God has a plan? Tell yourself, tell yourself, tell yourself. Remember, there's, there's life and death in the power of the tongue. Whatever you think, that's what you are. Remember what we are in the, we're state machines, state machines. Whatever we value. So you got to value that God wants you to have a future. You got to conti continue to tell yourself, God wants me to have a future. He has a plan for me. God doesn't want me just to be sad, broke, and busted, and disgusted. That's not what he wants for me. Your future, your future. That's why it's important not to get over. That's why you got to reset. Because your, your future, Brother Sherman, is full of hope. I don't care. So what? So what is, looks horrible right now? 
Thank God for it looking horrible. Because guess what? God is helping me do what the Bible says. I walk by faith, not by sight. See, the issue is a lot of times the reason why we stay stuck, but flip, the reason why we stay stuck is because we don't, we don't like challenges. We don't like changes. We won't even have discussions with certain people because we know they're going to tell us the right thing. When our mind is made up that this is what I'm going to do, I'm not calling him because I already know I ain't got time for be going back and forth. The reason why you're not calling that person because you know that they're going to tell you the right thing to do. Oh, raise your hand if you're sure. If you're sure, raise your hand if you're sure. And I'm speaking to you right now if you ever experienced that. Everybody raise your hand. Just raise your hand up because I want y'all to lie in the church. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Put your hand down. There are a lot of things that we make our mind up with. But that, that makes us become stuck as well. So check this out. I'm going to read this. Watch this. We have to understand that we're not, we're not a victim of our circumstances. We're not victims. That's, that's what keeps you stuck. You think, oh, woe is me. No. That's why the Bible, watch this. That's why the Bible, and I use this scripture all the time. I talk about it all the time for Lee. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. Acknowledge him. All that you do, and he will what? Direct your path. That gets you out of the victim state of thinking. Because then you start thinking and you start understanding and believing, God, there's a purpose why I'm going through this. There's a purpose why you haven't answered this prayer yet. Do you understand? And, 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 and watch this, watch this, watch this. When you start thinking like that, you unstick yourself. Because you realize that I got hope God's going to take care of this. And you keep moving. You, you're in pain. You, you're still in, in pain. You're still saying, God, I need you to move. But you keep moving. You keep working. Nobody knows how you think. Nobody knows how you feel based on how you react. That goes back to that predictable machines. <laughs> I mean, not machines, but computers and people. So watch this. There are, I'm going to give you this. This is good. Some folk ask you, if anybody call and call and say, uh, church was good today? Say, yeah. What are you talking about? No, you go back to YouTube and you look at it. <laughs> what I'm going to give you, I promise you, will change the, rest of, change the trajectory on your 2024. I guarantee you. I promise you. Guarantee, if you listen, it will change it. Because it gives you a deeper understanding of what you're dealing with. Because everything is spirit. The spirit realm is a cause all realm. Watch this. There are four major spirits operating in the past that we don't even notice. Four major spirits that operate in the past. Those are the four spirits that operate in the past, and they have power in the past. So when a believer always goes back and remembers some stuff that you said or did, and that's why it's important for marriages. Y'all better stop bringing that stuff up in the past. Well, you did it because it's still in you. You mad and you looking, you looking at that person and, and it looks like they have some remnants of what they did in the past in them. And it's really not, you know, little, little stuff in them. And it's really not. Now, all that stuff that's in the past that, that you should have left in the past. A amen, amen, amen. Starts to stir up in you. And because you thought that's what it was. Now, you start reacting like that's what it is. Or, watch this, maybe it is that. But, watch this, hear me good, ladies, hear me good, men. Uh, I got a relationship series, me and Tasha are teaching in February, so I don't get it. But, but, watch this, that's why God says, woman, remember, if you conduct yourself in a godly manner, even if he act a fool, he'll be won over by your conduct. Ooh, man, remember, remember this, man. I'm not even thinking about you or answering your prayer unless you respect that woman. So that means, watch this, that means I'm resetting. I'm not worrying about it. I'm saying, God, you got it. That's what Isaiah is telling the folk. God's going to do a new thing. Allow him to do a new thing. But first, you got to reset. So check this out. Look, 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 watch this. Four spirits operating in the past. Makes a lot of sense. Watch this. Bondage. A state of being a slave, oppressor. Imprisonment. Sometimes our past will imprison us and imprison our mind from believing that God has something greater for us. 
because we have latched on to the past and it's operating right now in the present and the past is the past. Remember, it pollutes the present, which pollutes the future. Oh boy, check it, deficiency. Check this out, deficiency. A lack or shortage. Huh. I remember, I remember, uh, man, I was struggling. I can't struggle like that no more. I got to do this, 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 and this. Instead of depending on God, there's nothing short. There's not a shortage in God, but it's a deficient. The past has deficiency. What's this? What's this? Poverty. A state of being extremely poor. And I'm not just talking about financially. Spiritually, we are extremely poor if we continue to connect in the past and let the past dictate our future and our spiritual walk. Because we will never grow. We'll be like a hamster on the wheel. I say it all the time, hamster on the wheel. Looks like we're making progress, but because that past is there, guess what? Oh, we got to start all over. Looks like we're making progress. Oh, we got to start all over. Spiritually, extremely poor. Now watch this one. A defeatist mentality. That you know what? I'm just going to accept the way it is. The devil is a lie. It never changed. My whole family been like that. We never had this. We never did this. You know what? This is the best I really can do. The devil is a liar. Uh -uh, I'm going to change some stuff. No, 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 no. We're, we're, we're getting ready to change some stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to look at the past and say, I, just, I mean, just accept what it is. No. I decree and declare even greater things. That's what Jesus says. He says, he cancels out a defeatist. Watch this. Mentality. When Jesus says, even greater things you'll do than I do. The he's able sermon. He's able to do above and beyond what you can imagine or think. Man, you should walk around. I don't care if you broke, busted, and disgusting. You better look like a million dollars. You better talk like a million dollars. You better act like a million dollars. You better smell like a million dollars. Do y'all understand? Do not allow your circumstance to hold you hostage. Last thing, check this out. Notice what God says. He says, he says this. Isaiah says this. He says, behold, I am going to do something new. So 18. 18, he says, don't let the past affect you. Then after that, he says, I'm going to do something new. Because see, I got to tell you, don't let the fact, I can't do anything new unless you get that, you, you stop living in the past. Forget that past. Let bygones be bygones. So what? They tripping. Forgive them, move on. Hey Amen. Don't put yourself in that situation again. You hear what I'm saying? Forget it. Don't worry about it. Don't let the past. Don't bring that stuff. Forget them folk in the past. Don't bring it up. Because every time you think about it, you bring those same, watch this, I forgot to say this, you bring those same little demons into your present. And that's what the enemy wants to do. So check this out. 19 says, says, says to be all, I'm doing a, a something new. Something new. So what I'm going to tell you on that one is, watch, simple as this, as I close this out. Simple as this. Expect the new thing. Do y'all hear me? When you reset, expect the new thing. I'm telling you, don't, don't you not expect it. You got to expect it. Expect the new thing. I mean, don't re I, I think I'm going to do this and revisit and refresh this series probably uh, month five so we can understand where we are. Expect the new thing. That's what Isaiah says. He says, look, behold, I'm going to do something new. Expect the unbelievable shift in your life. When God says, I'm going to do something new, that means I'm going to do something that you've never experienced before. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Matter of fact, not only have you never experienced, you have never seen anybody else really experience what I'm getting ready to do in your life. You may see something similar. Amen, amen. But expect an unbelievable shift. That's what God says. Woo! Watch this. It says, watch this. I'm going to do something new. Now it will spring up. Will you not be aware of it? So watch, watch this. Watch. Says this. I will. Let's, look, 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 look. Expect me to know what I'm finishing. He says, I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. <laughs> I hope y'all 
catching this. I hope you're catching this. That says, I'm not just going to let you barely make it when you're going through. I'm not just going to do just more than enough when you're going through. He says, expect the unbelievable. Expect, or y'all heard the testimony. Expect if you, if somebody lays you off, expect that's going to be your best financial year that you've ever had. That's why I say it's telling the folk, I know you in bondage, and some of you, you're not in bondage, but you're still in bondage, but God is going to do a new thing. Don't worry about it. He's going to bless regardless. He's going to do something new that you've never seen before. Expect the unbelievable shift. He says, I make rivers in the desert. What? Rivers in the desert? I hope y'all catching this. Man, don't make me, man. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Watch this. The animals of the field will glorify me. Expect a new thing. Watch this. Watch this. The animals of the field will glorify me. I'll look at them like the jackals and the orchards. But I have given waters in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts <laughs> to give drink to my chosen people. Watch, watch. Hear, hear me. I'm going to close. I'm going to close. My chosen people. Look at the last part. Expect the new thing. The people whom I formed for me. Yeah, the enemy tearing you up. And you like, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. I know I'm going to make it. But God says, expect a new thing. Because I created you for me. That's why I can say I would never leave you nor forsake you. But in order for me to do that, you got to believe it. Watch. So... This series is going to help us get a deeper understanding of what we need to do as we reset. That's why you don't want to miss next Sunday. I promise you. And you tell all the mother folk that are in your church, don't miss next Sunday. Listen to me. Last slide. Y'all take a picture of that. This is what this series is about. Those two, take a picture of that. And I want you to do a little scripture reading on that. Those three words, dependency, dedication, durability. That's where you're going to shift. That's where you're going to reset in those three areas. You're going to reset in your dependency, reset your dependency on God through Jesus Christ. We're going to reset our dedication to God through Jesus Christ. And then we're going to reset our durability in God through Jesus Christ. Everything that you can ever imagine going through, everything that you can ever imagine God blessing with is caught up in those three resets. Because in those three resets, and you're going to hear this, there are four dimensions to the individual. In those three resets, we're going to talk about those dimensions in each one of those resets. Your four dimensions are your mind, body, soul, and spirit. So that reset has everything to do with your dependency. Your dependency has everything to do with your mind, body, soul, and spirit. It has everything to do with your dedication. Your dedication has everything to do with your mind, body, soul, and spirit. Durability has everything to do with your mind, body, soul, and spirit. God needs you to depend on him 100%. God needs you to be dedicated to him 100%. God needs you to be durable in him 100%. Not in anything else. Not in yourself but durable in him. And there's some things that are attached with all of these. Because Jesus lived that life for us. That we can be, we can depend, depend on God. We can be dedicated to God. We can be durable in God. The Bible says no weapon formed against you. I don't care what you do. That's why it's time to reset in those areas and watch what God will do. Try it. Just try it. Just try it. Just come. Get the information. Just try it. Just try it. I promise you it will change the trajectory of your life in 2024. In the name of Jesus. You're going to be so happy that you're going to say, Dr. Stafford, where's your cash at? <laughs>
I'm going to sing you a birthday gift. No, just play. This is real. So I'm so excited about this series because I know what it's going to do in the life of Fellowship Christian Center Church. So I challenge each and every one of us. And I'm hoping that you are engaged in this whole refresh. If you didn't start the refresh, I want you to start the refresh and go through those three weeks. So what, you didn't start with us. It's all right. Start now. Go through those three weeks. Challenge yourself. It's a major reset. Don't just not do it. I promise it will bless your life. And the reason why we're able to stand here confident that knowing that God's going to do exactly what he said he'll do is because God loved us all that he gave us Jesus. Jesus loved us so that he gave us his life. And he just didn't give his life to give his life. He gave his life so we don't have to worry about it. He gave his life so we can just refocus on resets. We focus on doing better, being better. This is real talk. We don't have to worry about whether it's going to happen or not because it's going to happen. The Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give the desires of your heart. Last week I said, infuse God's, uh, uh, ask God to infuse you with his desires for your life. And they're going to connect to whatever your desires are. And then if you got some desires that are not lining up with God, he's going to give you a whole different perspective and line you up and give you a different understanding, I promise you. So it's a win-win situation. The younger you are, the younger you are, the younger you are, the more I challenge you to be super intentional in making this happen. super intentional. Why do you say the young you are be super intentional? Because there are some things that if I would have known differently when I was younger, there's some things that, that's one of the reasons why when I present a lesson, when I present, present a sermon, I want to make sure that it has some practicality, it has some step-by-step -step stuff. I want to make sure that it's connected to everything that the Word of God says. And that's why I take that time to do that. That's why I want it to be shorter because I want you to glean what I have to say to you. I don't want you to just say, oh, no, if it's just a half a point, if it's just one point that you get when you walk out of here, I want you to implement it in your life and you see what God does in the name of Jesus. You'll see what he does in your life. I don't care how young you are, how old you are. You'll see what he does in your life because God is a God that cannot and will not lie. It's real. So I'm going to ask everyone to stand in the building right now. today, you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you're streaming with us live, if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you watch this as a recording, you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I'm offering Christ to you right now in the name of Jesus. Offering Christ. I'm offering that you receive Jesus in your life as your Lord and Savior. That would change your life forever. Turn your life around. That would give you hope. I don't care how hopeless the situation looks feels, smells, God will give you hope through Jesus Christ. So if that's you, I want to offer Christ and I want you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I say this every Sunday, that's something that God wants to do for you. But he wants you to be part of the family of believers. He wants you heavenly fraternity. And you do that by accepting Christ. So if that's you, just repeat these words after me. Nothing, nothing formal, nothing saying that you got to do this, but it's just something that I connected in the Bible and it makes it easier. If you want to be saved today, if you want to give your life to Christ today, repeat these words. Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son. God, I believe that you raised him from the dead. Today, God, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins and 
the name of Jesus. God, as your word says, I receive Jesus in my life today as my Lord and Savior. I speak that when you have spoken that I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. And I decree and declare this day based on the confessions of my faith and accepting Jesus that I am saved. I'm saved from the penalty of death and sin. I thank you God your saving grace and mercy in Jesus name. All over the building just give God a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. Give him a shout of hallelujah in the place. Celebrate someone that gave their life to Christ in the name of Jesus. So one of the most important things once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior is that you connect with a body of believers where you can work out your soul salvation. And when I mean work out your soul salvation, in God through Jesus Christ. There's nothing that you can do to work it out. But it has everything to do with you being obedient and dedicated to God through Jesus Christ. So if that's you, we want to invite you to be part of Fellowship Christian Center Church. If you're streaming online and you want to join, there's a link that will pop up. Just click the link and fill out the information. Someone from the new members orientation team will contact you, I promise you, in the name of Jesus. If that's you here today, that you want to be part of Fellowship Christmas in the church. I want to ask that you come right now in the name of Jesus because we would love to have you part of this ministry. We would love to have you part of the family. I just don't believe there's a better place or better people. Amen, amen. The Fellowship Christmas in the church in the name of Jesus. If you're a little shy, that's all right. After church, go to the Connect Center. You can fill out our FBC Connect card and uh, just... When on that card, just tell them I want to be a member, and someone from the members orientation team will contact you. Sunday after Sunday, we have people that do that, and that's all right as well. In the name of Jesus. Now, what I want to do as we close out, before we give the benediction, we get this time. And Deacon Spencer was standing here because he's the deacon of the week, and that will be your, your family deacon. As we close this out. What I want you to do right now, anything you need to reset, I want you to bring it to the altar. Anything you need to reset. Anything that you can think of you need to reset, just bring it to the altar. Come on. Reset. Remember, there's a conversion reset. There is a growth reset, and there's a refresh reset. It doesn't matter. Just come to the altar. Whatever it is you need to reset. I'm here first. There's some things I need to reset. And everything is, 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 is linked to our dependency, reset dependency, resetting our dedication, resetting our durability. Because I don't know about you, the more I want, I, I want to depend on God with everything, every fiber of my being, because the more I depend on God, oh boy, the more I get self out the way. When I get self out the way, that allows the Spirit to come in and operate and work in the name of Jesus. This is real. The more dedicated I am to God, the more dedicated I am to God, Oh boy, it shows that God can trust me. And when God can trust you, woo -wee, the windows of heaven open up for you. Amen, amen. And then the durability. All of us are going to have bad times. All of us are going to have something. Satan is out there like a roaring lion trying to seek whom he may devour. You're not exempt. You're not exempt. I want to be more durable in God through Jesus Christ. I want to be able to tell the devil you are a lie. I want to be able to warfare for my family that are not believers and know that Satan has to flee in the name of Jesus. I want to be able to decree and declare those things that are unlikely, that seem impossible in the name of Jesus. So whatever it is that you're looking at it, you're thinking about it in your, in, in your mind, in your body, in your soul, in your spirit that you need to reset. Especially your spiritual life. Just begin to speak it to God right now. Just speak it to God. Softly to God right now. Right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now, right now. It made God, I need to reset how I manage my finances. I need to reset God. My, my relationship. My, I need to reset God. Oh God, my spiritual growth in you. 
of my time that I spent with you, God. Whatever it is, whatever it is, reset it, reset it. I need to reset my attitude. Because, God, I've been going through some stuff, and I've been short-tempered. Reset my pace. Oh, boy, I hope you all understand how serious this is. Now, just lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Let's touch and agree right now. We're getting ready to dismiss this. Tell God, I thank you in the matchless mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you for this resetting period. Whatever, God, oh, God, whatever they throw in the atmosphere, whatever we throw in the atmosphere to reset, God, I know you hear us. So, God, as we come to you humble as we know how, oh, God, asking you to forgive us of all of our sins. God, we empty ourselves to you right now in the name of Jesus. We get all the clutter out of our mind, all the clutter out of our mind, God. And we're just coming up here as empty vessels, God. Humble, empty vessels, knowing that we are nothing without you. We can do nothing without you. We have nothing without you, God. So God, as your under-shepherd, I touch and agree with these that have come to the altar right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, whatever it is they need to reset, God, it's already reset. God, give them a hunger and thirst after righteousness like never before. Oh, God, give them a desire to please you like never before. And God, as we reset, God, we know, God, that you are God that will not for the true and living God. There is no other God beside thee. So, God, we know that you're going to provide. We know, God, that you're going to take care of us. We know, God, that you're going to guide us. We know, God, that you will never leave us nor forsake us in the name of Jesus. So we stand here, God, in a posture of reset. God, we ask you to bring things new. We expect to new, God, in the name of Jesus. We cancel out the spirit of the past. We decree and declare there's a new thing in our life. Oh, God, there's new things happening in our life. So we thank you in advance for hearing and answering our prayers. Say you have no authority, you have no position, you have no power over God's people. We thank you, God. And we speak, it already done. It's already done. In the matchless mighty name of Jesus, all over the building, just repeat after me. Be it done. Unto me, it is done unto me. In Jesus' name, watch this, watch this, repeat this. In Jesus' name, I'm expecting a new thing. In Jesus' name, I cancel out the past. Oh God, I look forward to the future. I look forward, God, to everything you're doing right now. In Jesus' name, I speak greatness. In Jesus' name, I speak prosperity. In Jesus' name, I speak favor. In Jesus' name, I speak healing. In Jesus' name. Ooh, be it done, be it done, and be it done. Somebody shout hallelujah in the building right now. Give me some praise as you go back to your seat. Remain standing. Praise God for each and every one of you that came out to in-person worship this morning, that are worshiping in person. We thank God for those that are streaming with us online in the name of Jesus. We are just grateful and thankful for the God, the God, for God's faithfulness here at Fellowship Christian Center Church. We know God is going to do even greater things in 2024, and we are excited. I want to give a shout out. Uh, uh, we have a special visitor in the place. We praise God for. I don't want to mess up the name. I'm looking at how they wrote it. Uh, Shatir, did I, I jacked it up. How you pronounce it? 
Shatara. Okay. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't put all that Shatara on that paper right there. They didn't put all that Shatara. Starks, right? Amen, amen. So guess the brother Sean. We praise God in the name of Jesus. Brother Sean Wilson. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, coming to worship with us. Uh, we, we, we are grateful. We are grateful for every first time. If you're a first time visitor here today, I don't think we have uh, a lot of first time visitors here today because we don't have a lot of folk here today. <laughs> uh, we praise God for you. But if you didn't get a chance to fill out the Connect Center uh, FDC Connect card, please do so. And you'll, you'll get some information from us. Uh, left your phone number, we'll just text you, say hi to you, pray with you, see if you need anything you need, just for some weeks, and we appreciate you coming, we truly, truly do, and thank you, Brother Sean. All right, all hearts and minds clear, everybody enjoying your new year thus far? Y'all good? Anybody need a new job? Who need nothing? You need a new job? Because it's time for a career shift or something? All right, Sister Allen. Who else need a new job? Fresh job. Need a new job. All right, when I close this out, I'm praying for new jobs. Watch what happens. Hey, look, not because of me. It ain't got nothing to do with me. Holy Spirit just told me new jobs. I don't know. Because y'all know I don't know normally do this at the end. But new jobs, because I got to listen to the Holy Spirit. Because God's want to sh- God wants to show you his power. When he does that, when he, when he gives me that, he wants to show you his power. After he does it, I want you to come and give me a testimony, okay? Just do that for me. Because not only does it help you, it helps me. Amen, amen. Because God's training my ear well my spirit to hear things that he needs me to hear. Huh? Retirement. Yeah, but I'm talking about jobs right now. We ain't talking about retirement. These folks talking about jobs. They got to get these jobs, then they can retire. In the name of Jesus. All right, all hearts, minds clear. Praise God for you. Please come to Bible study. We've got a great lesson that's going to start. Bible study on Wednesday. I promise you it'll bless you. That's a great way to reset in the name of Jesus. So you're going to get a text from me. You'll get a phone bike. You'll get all that stuff. Don't ignore my stuff. All right? Y'all get my phone bikes. Don't just be saying that's FBC because it come out. That's Dr. Staff. You better listen to it in the name of Jesus. I'm going to put a prayer on my phone bike now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, make them listen to it. They don't listen to it. Make that iPhone get hot on their ear in the name of Jesus. When they talking to somebody now, this way. <laughs> all right, all hearts and minds clear. Let me pray us out. Eternal God, we thank you right now for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard. We thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your worship from praise and worship to worship and giving. Oh God, worship and welcoming one another. God, we thank you for allowing us, God, just to come out to give you glory and our health and strength, our peace of mind. God, we thank you. And we don't take it lightly. We don't take it for granted that we're able to do worship. So God, I speak over those right now specifically because you put it in my spirit. Those that are looking for new career shifts, new jobs. Those that raise their hand. God, I speak that it's already done. And God, I ask you God, and you, you, you operate in your time, but I ask you, God, because you put it in my spirit, just to show them your power with a sense of urgency, God. And whatever you're doing in the midst of this for them spiritually, help them to recognize and see the message, see the purpose behind it, because you're getting ready to do a new thing, God. I know you are. So, God, we thank you in advance for the new jobs. We thank you in advance for the career shift. And, God, as they get their new jobs, God, just help them to realize that they are still the distribution center to the kingdom of God and create even more for them. So God, we speak over Fellowship Christian Center Church. We speak a spirit of unity. We speak a spirit of generosity. We speak a spirit of that hungers and thirst after righteousness. We speak a spirit of love, God. We speak a spirit of servanthood and volunteerism to overtake the mind, body, and soul and spirit of this ministry. God, we thank you in advance for being a keeper of your promise. We thank you in advance for hearing and answering the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous, God. We thank you in advance, God, for making it happen in the name of Jesus and being God El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi. God, we thank you for your son Jesus. As we depart this place, never from your mercy, never from your grace, continue to govern our thoughts, order our steps, and direct our path in you through Jesus Christ. Now may the grace of God, the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ.
Christ. Sweet communion of his Holy Spirit. Rest rule and abide in each and every one of our hearts and forth now and forevermore. All over the building that shall be it done unto me. It is done unto me in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. God bless you. Have a great rest of your week. Now y'all know it's going to be 12.